Wei Chung swore not to drink wine, eat meat, commit adultery, or kill. However, the Shaolin warriors were allowed to break the last commandment if they were in mortal danger. Apart from renouncing worldly pleasures, Wei Chung also had to forswear his common name and take on a new monastic name. Thus, Wei Chung went from being a simple fisherman to being the monk Dao Kung. Teacher Zhong Fei, why is my new name so similar to Dao Shan's name? The name of every new Shaolin monk is made up of three parts. The first, She, indicates that the monk belongs to our temple. We don't usually pronounce that part. The second part is taken from a strict order of names described 300 years ago in the poem by Abbot Fuyu. It is the same for all the students of one teacher, so my followers are always called Dao. The third part is unique for every monk and is made up by the teacher. Let's move on to more pressing matters. Now that you are one of us, I would like to teach you another one of our techniques. Not many people know of it, and even less can do it. It is based on being able to completely control your chi. We usually start teaching it after months of preparation and meditation, but we don't have enough time right now. Wong Tai Xin, the official who told us the location of the Wuku base, has sent us another letter. He congratulates us on our victory and thanks us for helping the local residents while the head of the province does nothing. Gratitude doesn't make a meal. It would be better if he sent in the army. Wong Tai Xin is just the censor, and censors don't send out armies. He can only arrest those guilty of incompetence or corruption. The official also says that the situation is more complicated than it seems at first glance. He has invited me to his temporary residence in Hongzhou to discuss it in person. Zhang Lu and Dao Kung will accompany me. Du Wuku have attacked the residence. Guan Li, what's the plan? Our first priority is to protect Wang Tai Xin. The residence is very large, and we don't know exactly where he is. We'll have to split up and scour the whole territory. As soon as you find the official, protect him until the others arrive.
thank you for saving me. The Wuku have already found out about your arrival somehow. Ah, there is no mystery in that. The provincial governor is colluding with the pirates, and I have evidence to show his complicity in what is happening. That explains why nobody has gathered the troops and driven back the pirates so far. Why can't you arrest him? Hmm. You may not have heard, but our Emperor has passed away recently after a long illness. His son, Juizu, who is still a child, has now ascended the throne. The young Emperor's retinue has been trying to agree on who will be regent until he reaches his majority. So far, all these advisors, units, and nobility have been mired in feuding and arguments. The common folk are suffering, and all they care about is power. Oh, uh, this is sadly true. Like all censors, I only obey the Emperor or his regent, and only he can authorize an arrest. My hands are thus tied in the short term. Unlike you, we are not bound by bureaucratic restrictions. We won't interfere in your conflict with the Governor. But if you have information regarding the Wuku, we are keen to hear it. Uh, that's all I was hoping for. As you know, for many years, our country has been under the hygiene, a sea ban, that forbids merchant ships of other countries from entering the Middle Kingdom ports. I clearly remember it being abolished right after the Wuku were defeated. It was said that lifting the ban would prevent the pirates from reappearing, and indeed, the Wuku were not seen for all those years. But the hygiene had one exception, the Ryukyu Kingdom. It alone was allowed to trade with us overseas enabling them to amass huge wealth. Now, they've lost their exclusive position. I suspect that the Ryukyu merchants have hired the ex-Wuku to resume attacks. They will use their own people at court to push for the Haiji to be reinstated, using the new pirate invasion as an excuse. The death of the Emperor has also played into their hands. It's bad news all around, as it won't be easy to get to these merchants. Have you ever heard of a person called Fudo? One of the Wuku leaders mentioned him. Fudo? No, I haven't. But I will try to find out what I can. In return, I would ask you to pass on any information that seems important to me. Any leads would be helpful right now. Agreed. The Pigeon has brought alarming news from the monastery at the top of Mount Juhua, one of the sacred mountains in Buddhism. The monks report that they have been attacked by pirates, but managed to drive them off. I know that monastery. Its monks are excellent warriors and have previously taught me a lot. It makes no sense for the Wuku to attack them, however, as the temple is small and holds no expensive relics. This is what we will try to find out. I already have another task for you, but Tao Kung, go there and try to find out what possible interest the Wuku have in the temple. sign.
I'll have to force my way through the grass.
dare to poke their noses in here again. The Wuku are attacking the monastery again. I bet the monks have taken shelter in the main temple.
abbot is badly wounded and cannot come outside. But we all thank you for your help. I hope the pirates will finally leave us alone. What were they looking for, do you think? Once upon a time, our temple was the largest in the province. And a legend tells of an ancient relic that was kept in one of the caves. It possessed great power, and only a few chosen monks were allowed to come near it. Two hundred years ago, a strong earthquake destroyed a large part of the complex. It was then decided to move the relic to another, safer location, and the monastery soon fell into decline. The pirates could have found out about this relic from an ancient text written before the catastrophe. Do you know where the relic was taken after the earthquake? No clear records remain, but legends usually mention the Temple of Upper Heaven on one of the peaks of Huangshan. Thank you. This information may be of great help. The monks think that the Wuku are seeking an ancient relic that used to be kept in their monastery, but was moved to the Temple of Upper Heaven on Huangshan. The Taoist Temple has one relic, this one has another. They're more like Tomb Raiders than pirates. This is all very strange. If you remember, Shang Lung said that the Wu Ku were also looking for something specific in the monastery on Mount Putuo. Putuo and Zhu Hua are sacred Buddhist mountains, while Long Hu, where we found the first relic, is one of the sacred mountains of Taoism. This reminds me of an ancient legend, but I need to check it first. You certainly will. But first, send a letter to Wan Tai Xin and tell him everything that we have learned. Then, we shall get a group together and visit this temple of Upper Heaven. Its inhabitants may also be in danger.
away from the holy relic and leave at once, or you'll share the same fate as your minions. Damn, I ran out of time. I told Fudo that he should have ended you a long time ago, but he wouldn't budge. Blasted monastic solidarity. Fudo is a monk? Oops, perhaps I've said too much. Or have I? <laughs> yes, he's a monk. Japanese one, of course, a Sohei. He frets that so many people have had to suffer, but still justifies his behavior in the name of lofty goals. Uh, he can be such a bore sometimes. But why keep talking about him? Let's get down to business. I'm assuming this is the relic? If by relic you mean one of the sections of the Heshibi Jade Disc, then yes, it is. My guess has been confirmed. Heshibi? According to legend, this powerful artifact endows its owner with incredible power. All the manuscripts state that the disc disappeared 300 years ago during the Mongol invasion. That's right. As the barbarian army approached the capital, the order was given to break up the disc and hide it. The capital was Hangzhou back then, so the pieces were hurriedly hidden in these parts. Why is everything always so complicated? You could have just destroyed the disc. But no, you had to split it into pieces so that one day some psychopath would try to unite them and take over the world. While the Heshibi is whole, the energy contained inside it is in constant circulation and doesn't reveal itself in any way. If the disc is destroyed... This energy will be abruptly released and cause a terrible cataclysm. Right now the disc is not whole, but the instability of the shards can be controlled if they are kept in special places where power is concentrated. The sacred mountains of the Middle Kingdom are such places. The first shard was hidden in the Taoist temple on Mount Longhu. The second was hidden in the Buddhist temple on Mount Juhua and later brought here. The third shard should be kept in a Confucian temple, but we don't know which one. You keep talking about the great power that this disc bestows, but what is it exactly? Heshibi erases the boundary between worlds. Its owner can summon thousands of spirits from other worlds in an instant, and they will all obey his will. He will have to pay a terrible price for it, though. The person who performs this ritual binds himself to the disc and is torn from the wheel of rebirth. The disc absorbs its owner's essence after his death, and it forever becomes a part of Heshibi. The person responsible for all this has either gone mad in their hunger for power, or has nothing left to lose. This is why the abbot suggested that we keep the shard until the conflict with the Wuku is over. He said that the shard will remain stable for a long time if nobody tries to use its energy. Meanwhile, they will try to find a new place to hide it. Excellent. Let's take the shard and head back to the Tulu before the scouts start following us. <laughs> 